Okay, so I uh, ventured over to a Sprint store a little earlier and um, I took a look at the new Galaxy S4. So, basically, what you have on the plate is, you know, a camera with more megapixels, a new battery that has um, basically slightly longer charge. It has new software that allows you to um, basically use the camera in new and different ways. For instance, if you're staring at the uh, screen, the camera recognizes you by seeing your eyes in the same way it recognizes people for, uh, for what is it called, um, uh, auto-focusing on faces. And uh, the camera knows when you're looking at it and when you're not looking at it because it focuses on your eyes. When you stop looking at it, the uh, camera will pause videos that are stored in the phone. It can't do it with the YouTube videos that you watch on the internet, but um, if there's videos inside the phone, like if you download movies or if you make your own videos, the uh, phone knows what you're, uh, whether or not you're watching it, and when it stops sensing your eyes, it decides to um, pause the screen. Um, the old Galaxy S3 had a similar technology, Smart Stay, and uh, what it would do is if it noticed that you were uh, not looking at it or if it couldn't see your face, it would allow the screen to go into rest so this way it could save some power. Um, the other what feature is, is that um, when the camera is watching you, uh, it knows whether, obviously whether or not you're looking at it and the uh, camera can uh, allow the phone to be tilted mm -hmm. so that the, uh, Where was President Obama uh, the uh, scroll of whatever you're looking at will basically uh, scroll up and down. So if you s look at the phone and you tilt it, if you tilt it up or you tilt it down, it'll be able to auto-scroll. So far, the technology does not exist in any of this stuff to actually track your eyes and see what exactly your eye is looking at. Um, you know, eventually something like that will come down the pipe. They haven't what even perfected that in control, like uh, military jet fighters like the F-35. They're trying to, but they haven't perfected it. So if they haven't perfected it, I doubt it'll be on the consumer market anytime soon. So here's the thing. Um, you know, naturally, whenever there's a new um, Android phone, you know, everybody automatically labels it an iPhone killer. And everybody um, says, oh, yeah, yeah, well, everybody wants to jump ship and they want to go from Apple to Samsung or Apple to HTC to get the HTC One. And, you know, it dawned upon me that labeling any of these things a, an iPhone killer is just ridiculous. Now, holding the Galaxy S4, basically it's only slightly bigger than a Galaxy S3. Both of which are a lot smaller than the Galaxy what is Note. The meaning of life? Now, I've um, used the Galaxy Note before because uh, one of my coworkers has one. Uh, and to tell you the God's honest truth, that thing is a monster. It's just, it's so big that it makes a lot of sense for a reason which I'm going to discuss in a minute. But it's just too big for the hands. And I have very, very big hands. Like you can see right here on the screen that this uh, Galaxy S3 is a big phone, but it's pretty small in my hands. When I hold the Galaxy Note, it's it fits probably right into my hands, and I have very large hands. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, most people don't have hands as large as me. So what would prompt a lot of these people to have to get phones this size when people don't have hands this big and it they r actually require two hands just to hold one of these monsters i, gonna, I, I mean basically pulling out a galaxy note like if you're a little girl how, like let's say you're a five um, foot tall girl pulling one of these things out is like taking like a plasma stuff, television out of your purse like room, so, so your ultimately um i'm you know i i like yeah, the screen the size closet. but i absolutely do not yeah. like the operating system well, i prefer the simplicity of ios I do not like Android for a number of reasons. First of all, a lot of the software is buggy. You, if you were to go right now from a HTC One to a Galaxy Note 4, then you'd have a problem with some of your apps not working on the other phone because one of the problems with Android phones is, um, and you know, people who've had Android devices and have moved from one device to another, they know that in most cases, the software doesn't automatically work the exact same way on the other device. Sometimes it has to be upscaled, sometimes it has to be downscaled, and w when you're doing this, you end up in a situation where either it doesn't look as good, or maybe it just doesn't work. Because when I um, 
first tested Galaxy S3, I noticed that a lot of the software, you know, re refused to boot coming off of a, um, it was a, a Galaxy S2. Um, so, me personally, I'm not interested in Android. I like Android for the tablets, such as the Asus Transformer that I got. I like Android and tablets. But considering how much you have to add to a tablet, you know, like a keyboard and possibly a mouse and this, that, and other, you might as well just have a mini netbook. But here's the problem that I have. Um, as much as I like the screen size of the Galaxy Note, I know Apple will never build a phone that big because they don't want anything, you know, interfering with their iPad mini sales. Now, I'm angry at Apple specifically because I feel the iPhone 4 should have had a 4-inch screen instead of a 3.5. And I feel the iPhone 5 should have had a 4.5-inch screen instead of a 4-inch screen. Um, by not putting out a 4.5-inch screen, or at least something right around 4.3 to 4.5, that's how Apple fucked up. Now, I'm hoping Apple isn't stupid enough to keep making the iPhone 5 shell and put out an iPhone 5S. If they do that, their stock prices are gonna just be fucked. Like, they're, they're gonna just drop into the toilet. Hopefully Apple won't be that stupid. So, what I recommend, and I hope they'll do it, is I hope they'll put a 4.5 inch screen. But up until they do that, I'm not leaving Apple. One of the things about this is that when you buy into one of these phones, you're buying into an ecosystem. If you stick with Android, you're probably going to stick with Android indefinitely. If you stick with Apple, you're going to stick with Apple. You're going to keep buying stuff in iTunes and you're going to keep on having it sync to your computer, this, that, and the other. So my logical solution, if you're a person who has an iPhone 5 but you really want to go over to a Galaxy S4 or a HTC One, all you really should do is simply buy an iPod Touch and transfer all the shit that you bought for your iPhone 5 to the iPod Touch, and then you can uh, sell the iPhone 5 or iPhone 4S or whatever you got. You can sell it on eBay for whatever you can possibly get for it, and then you can leave and you can go to your Galaxy. But me personally, and I'm, I'm a strong believer, it's like when I buy cars or whatever, I believe that people vote with their dollar. So if they really, really want to you know, go from one ecosystem to the other, they're free to do so. This is a real free market at, at work. People vote with their dollar. If they don't like what they're getting out of one product, they can just go somewhere else. Um, the Android system doesn't really lock you in. The Apple system does lock you in, but for the most part, I've been happier with the Apple system. For one reason, they have better apps. Like, I couldn't make this video right here easily using a Galaxy. I had to use iMovie. And I haven't seen a single software that performs as well as iMovie on Android. And in the last video I made, I issued a challenge asking somebody to tell me if there was an app on Android that performed as well as iMovie. And nobody did, so I guess there just isn't. Um, but real, what really bothers me is the fact that all of us, all of us, no matter what ecosystem you're in, Android or Apple, we're all getting screwed. Because these bastard carriers make it so you can't freely tether your data plan from your phone to your tablet. I really do not believe anybody wants to have to carry these damn tablets as their phone. The problem is nobody has the money to buy both a phone and a tablet. Or, I mean, some people have it, but the average person doesn't want to spend money like that. They want to save money. Money. Really? I didn't hear you know, so yeah, 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 yeah. for Apple yeah, yeah, and for yeah, T-Mobile yeah, yeah. and AT&T I mean, and Verizon to fuck us hey, and hey, not allow us to well, simply uh, transfer off. using Bluetooth I mean, I mean, our internet not, plan not, through our phone to our tablet like we used to be able to do on um, jailbroken phones. Or, or even even BlackBerry allows you to do it with BlackBerry Bridge. But I, I just think it's absolutely unfair. It's greed at work. And well, the problem really is, done, people don't simply abandon yeah, these yeah, fucking yeah, companies yeah, yeah, and tell them, work, yeah, the reason why we're that, leaving that, is because you keep on screwing us. You're giving us no, subpar no, service, and, and we don't like it. So, you, you know, if you want a Samsung Galaxy 4, I'm fairly certain that when you transfer your money over to South Korea, they'll appreciate you for it, especially when it comes time to fight North Korea. Because, you know, Samsung, LG, Hyundai, and Kia are basically slush funds to transfer money to North Korea. So, if you want to buy a Galaxy S4, go ahead, enjoy it.